I'm Rafael Cruz Conde, 76 years old, and I live in Madrid. I was born in Córdoba, which is a beautiful town in the south of Spain, in the region called Andalusia. I moved to Madrid once I had finished my career. I went from Córdoba to the University of Navarra in the north of Spain, in Pamplona. Once I had finished uh, the career, I did my specialty in orthopedics in Madrid, in the Hospital La Paz, which is one of the biggest hospitals in Madrid. My parents, my father was born in Córdoba, and my mother was born in a village in the very south of Spain, very famous town uh, called San Lucar de Barrameda. It was in, in the Atlantic coast, famous because uh, the expedition of Magallanes, the Portuguese, and Elcano, the Spanish, uh, were the, the first people to go around the world. Uh, that little town is where my mother uh, was born. Both families were families involved in wines. Both have bodegas, as we say in Spanish, cellar producing sherry wine in San Lucar and Cordoba wines uh, in the case of my father. Nothing to do with medicine in any case in any of my family for uh, many, many years ago. So I have been the first doctor with a cousin of mine in and my generation who were involved in medicine. I went to the university when I was 16 years old, so I think no one is... is uh, I cannot say I was attracted. It's impossible to choose when you are 16 years old. So, well, let's say it's my, my guidance guide me to that. I couldn't say any other thing. To my father, he used to say, there are two professions that I would have loved being. I would have chosen if I had the university, journalism or medicine. I went to medicine. The most difficult moment is when I had finished already my career, I was not sure that I wanted to do that. So I, I wanted to do what we call in Spain Bellas Artes. I wanted to do the San Fernando Academy in, in Seville, in Sevilla, because I was not sure I wanted to be a doctor. My father was very, uh, very agile in that way. And he proposed me, why don't you try for one year? And after one year, you, if you want to do a different thing, uh, we'll be all right, but you just wait for it. So I got so involved in, in, in my profession, or what was already my profession, that I didn't change. But that was my first obstacle. I did my specialty. I uh, worked in different hospitals and, and everything went all right for 50 years or 51. I remember when I was the president of the teaching committee in my hospital. So I had to do with uh, choosing the residents, the people coming to the hospital to do the specialty. I was very impressed by Pedro. I wanted him to come to our hospital. I had to do something special to, to get him because I, that vacancy was supposed to be dedicated to a different man. We were four people interviewing him. Time after, uh, I, when I used to comment this with Pedro, he said, I remember you and you remind me a uh, Senador del PP. The PP is the Conservative Party of Spain, and the, the, the Senator, you know what it is. I'm a, a conservative person, of course, but that impression <laughs> made me laugh a lot. That was my first contact with Pedro. When he got into the hospital already, he was a resident of my hospital. I had also private practice, so uh, I offered him to work with me. He accepted and we started working together. From there, 
until we went to Italy. So we've been very lucky in Italy, keeping this brilliant man. His uh, skill, his uh, skillful hands, his uh, very agile uh, mind, intelligence, is a very complete person. A very special person which I love, admire, respect, and I've been very lucky uh, finding him and choosing him that time. Uh, that was an intuition and I scored. I had the opportunity to see the tremendous, tremendous uh, difference between what we he could do during my first, I don't know, 20, 25 years of professional exercises with the means that we had, very poor, nothing. For instance, to treat some symptom so simple as a, uh, a ventral fracture. Everything was uh, it, it, the same more or less than 100, 300, 500 years, nothing. The technical improvement in X-ray and image and means and the instrumentation of the spine, which was unknown. The first time I, I saw screws in a, in a vertebra by a French doctor was uh, during the 70s. Young people, they think that what they have now to their hands had existed forever. That's not the truth. Permanent innovation and perfectioning what was good two years ago, now it's a little better. Image is, is uh, uh, something uh, which has made things very different. The instrumentation to, to be able to reduce fracture, to stabilize spines, and all these things made with very little risk. They think they are more aware, but it's a double edge knife. Good in one way, they know more, but to interpret what they read and what they think they know, sometimes it doesn't make things easier. You can be a, a good technician, you can have magic hands, you can have everything, but uh, the goal is the patience. In the old times, they say a doctor can heal the patient occasionally, uh, should relieve the patient frequently, and he must listen always to the patient. From 17 to 24, I used to write poetry, and, but then when I finished, uh, Orthopedics absorb me uh, my 90% of time. And that was like that for 50 years. After the, the pandemic, that I, I was apart from the hospital, that was the beginning of my end with uh, orthopedics. I've been in three writers' school doing uh, creative literature, short tales at the beginning. I'm writing a novel in this moment. We're going to publish five colleagues' short stories. In next April, we had to write every week. We had to read in front of our colleagues and the, the professor. It occupies me five to six years a day because the writer should spend many hours writing and many hours thinking and many hours reading. So my life is totally satisfactory. In the Delta de Ocabango, uh, you can be guided, but the guys cannot wear weapons. Hunting is forbidden, and weapons are forbidden except for very special cases. So if you want a safari, you go walking with a guide, but you don't have any weapon. When I asked the guy for that, he said, but why are you so surprised? If you live in, in, in countries where they are full of cars, you cross the street. We know this. 
what happened. We know that a leopard ran away if it see you. You don't see them, but they see you. But it's very, very rare that they attack you if you don't provoke. This was my mother, it was a beautiful lady from San Luca. I inherit these beautiful paintings. I found many years what the Presepi Napolitane, I didn't know, but I didn't know, I didn't see them closer. And uh, when I found it, I started buying figures little by little until last year that I went to Napoli to visit San Gregorio Armeno Street with Dr. Verjano and his wife and me with my daughter Maria. We spent a beautiful weekend there. Now it's small, they are a little crowded, the figures, but I, I, I have a contract with Pedro Verjano to get me another piece of scholarly to make it bigger. Very good materials with the all metal, silver, uh, the, the figures are in English, terracotta, glass, eyes, etc. But if you look at this, you, I think Pedro knows that, this is a, a woman with a neck deformity. She's got a congenital deformity. I'm sure the, the man who copied this, uh, made this, this woman, he saw her. He probably didn't know what she had, but it's very uh, obvious that they had a, a, a cervical a congenital deformity. Clothes are nothing to do with <laughs> when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But I, I find it it's, it's so, so fantastic. Look, look at the, 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 the skirt, the little baskets of fruits, everything. Look at the, the chicken and the rat coming out, the, the kitchen, the, the bread, the, everything. I mean, I, I love it. I think it's so, so attractive. The, the man with the bottles, so yes. To, to walk San Gregorio Armeno and to go into the shops and to see the people working with this, it was an amazing experience. I went to to Colombia. This is the photograph I took from the plane that was many years ago. I got to organize a trip with a man who had two uh, camps of cocaine in the Vaupes. He's uh, the Amazonian, Colombian Amazonian, very near the Pirar River. And I wanted to, to see the original people. So he took me to see a tri tribe called Barasana. And the Parasana were the people who used to help him to, to cultivate the coca. I was there, I knew these people, I knew how to... Uh, this man, a very, very, very uh, interesting man, well, the one who took me there, he had two bullets in his body because he was from the Conservative Party. <laughs> he was shot in the jungle, so the whole story was amazing. I could see how they make uh, coca in, in a sort of laboratory. This is an, a, a man that we met in the trip. We made from one of the camp to another one, seven hours by the river. We met these people. These people could be from the 16th century or the 17th. In a bongo, in a little canoe. He was working. He wasn't very happy because he didn't work. He could talk to us. This is the typical mouth of, of those people. Native, we made a trip. This is the man who took me there. I haven't stopped learning. I'm still learning. When I was surgeon, I was permanently working in one field. From one day to another, you decide that is finished, stop. Then, if you are not prepared to do something, you cease emptiness. My children. My children, with no doubt. And my grandchildren.
my regards and big abrazos to Pedro Berjano. Pedrito, te seguimos echando de menos aquí mucho, pero un abrazo muy fuerte, el de siempre, y también para Silvia, que sabes que la quiero mucho. Como dijo un día Silvia, somos familia.